In this video, we're taking a look at a starred problem, 1.5.12 from the 6th edition of Roverman. Comparing T-bill options, find a 6-month interest rate for a reinvestment. As you can see, the problem itself looks pretty long. It's actually not as difficult as you might imagine for how long it is. The main thing is just getting your mind around what's going on here. I thought it was worthwhile to do a video on this problem because it does introduce two new ideas. The idea of a T-bill, which stands for Treasury Bill and the idea of reinvestment. What is a treasury bill? A treasury bill is an investment essentially in a government. You are giving the government money and they're going to they're going to use your money to do whatever they want to do with it and they are going to pay you back a higher amount at the end of the term when the T bill in this case comes to maturity. T bills are short-term investments in governments. There's also reinvestments. You're taking money that you've earned from some investment and reinvesting it in some other investment. All right, let's look through the entire problem now with that background. Smith has a certain amount of money, 960, to invest at the beginning of the year, January 1st. There are two options, options A and B. They both involve T-bills and they both involve reinvestments. In option A, the T-bill has a term of six months. It's going to mature in six months it's quoted as a thousand T-bill. The purchase price is less than a thousand, nine sixty. So you are giving the government here, or Smith is giving the government at the beginning of the year, nine sixty, and then at the end of six months, when the T-bill comes to maturity, Smith is going to get a thousand. As an interest rate, a six-month interest rate, what did he earn? What was the rate? It was forty divided by the starting amount, nine sixty. 4.167% would be the rate of return, the interest rate, for this six-month investment. It's a six-month interest rate. More simply, in this kind of situation, actually, the interest is often quoted as a rate of discount. The interest earned 40 as a ratio or percentage of the final amount, the accumulated balance, 1,000, is just 4%, and that is often how T-bill rates are quoted as rates of discount D instead of I or J. Anyway, Smith is going to reinvest that money, the thousand, after six months on July 1st, in another six-month investment that's got a six-month interest rate of J and then have a certain amount at the end of the year. Option B, he can buy a one-year 1,000 T-bill. So after one year, it's going to mature to a thousand for a smaller purchase price of 920 meaning he's got another $40 to invest in something else, an account earning interest at the same six-month interest rate. Oops, sorry, misspelled interest. Interest rate J as an option A. The options are going to give you this same accumulated amount on December 31st, the end of the year. We want to solve for J. Evidently, there might be two values of J that could be possibilities here. Maybe there's going to be a quadratic equation that we have to solve. Uh, we want the one that's going to be less than 10%, the more realistic one. To simplify things, January 1st, July 1st is exactly a half year. It's really a little less than a half year. And January 1st to December 31st is exactly one year. Okay, that's going to simplify things. Often T-bills, uh, their maturity time periods, their time frames are in weeks instead of half a year or a full year. But we're going to keep things simple by assuming these kinds of things. All right, so how do you solve the problem? Just break it down, stay calm. It's, it's not really that hard. Option A, what's the future value going to be? Well, um, the initial investment's 960. It does grow to 1,000 after six months at, on July 1st. And then by December 31st, that 1,000 was invested again in this other uh, account earning a six-month interest rate of J, so it needs to be multiplied by the growth factor 1 plus J for one period, which is six months. For option B, what's the future value? Again, the it's the same 960, 920 of it going into this 1,000 T-bill, which matures in one year. Its future value will be 1,000, exactly the amount that it's quoted for. The other 40 is invested on January 1st, in another account with an effective six-month interest rate, J, but for two periods. 
two six-month periods for a full year. So instead of multiplying by 1 plus j, I need to multiply by 1 plus j squared. You need to set these two things equal to each other and solve for j. You're going to get a quadratic equation. And so if you use, say, the quadratic formula, you're going to need, uh, you're going to get two answers. You want the one that's less than 10%. Let's set these equal. It's probably simplest to divide everything by 40, say, after setting them equal. Uh, 1,000 divided by 40 would be 25. So I'd get 25 times 1 plus j equals 25 plus 1 plus j squared. It's also probably simplest to not bother expanding this out. I mean, you could. You don't need to. You can rearrange this as a quadratic in the expression 1 plus j. Be careful. Don't make a mistake like I almost did there. This is a quadratic equation in 1 plus j that can be solved using the quadratic formula for 1 plus j. Once I get an answer, I can subtract 1 from both sides to solve for j. Using the quadratic formula, 1 plus j will be, take the coefficient of the first power term and negate it, so negative 25 becomes positive 25, plus or minus the square root of negative 25 squared is 625, minus 4 times 1 times 25 is minus 100, all over 2 times 1. This is going to give you 12.5 plus or minus. We can actually, if we're going to pick j being less than 10%, it's going to be the minus 1. I'll just jump ahead to the minus 1 here right away. Looks like 1 plus j is going to be 12.5 minus 1 half times the square root of 525, and then j will be Subtract 1 from both sides, 11.5 minus 1 half times the square root of 525. Let's see what that produces. Uh, I'll go ahead and do the square root of 525 first. Divide it by 2. Negate it. Add 11.5. And there we have a j. 0 0.04356 as a percent, that's 4.356% for the answer, and that is correct. Uh, if we did use the plus sign here, definitely j would be too big. It would not be less than 10%. So that's the answer to this question.